What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are at True Automotive. We're working with Master Tech Joel. Um, we are working on the Harup Supercharger for the Tacoma. I think this is the second or third one to go on a Tacoma. So we'll kind of show you a little bit of how this install process is. After it's installed, we'll be going to D3, uh, or actually D3 Performance will be flying out from Texas to tune the truck with the new supercharger on it um, over at Chapman's Auto Performance with Cody. Uh, that's where we got our baseline. So baseline for the truck right now, as it sits with the cold air intake from InGen, um, 198 horsepower to the wheels, I'm on 35s, 222 foot-pounds of torque to the wheels. So I'm hoping to get around the 270 horsepower to the wheel mark. Um, I am going to 37, so that's obviously gonna decrease a little bit. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna show you exact comparison to comparison. It's meaning when we tune it and have everything done and dyno it again for the actual performance gain, we're gonna keep the 35s on there for that. So let's dive into the install with Joel. So step one Joel is doing now is removing the front grill. A couple 10 millimeter bolts, some push clips. Um, mine's a little bit trickier because we have to separate from the bumper caps because the bumper caps are attached to the fiberglass here. So he's gonna try and just work the grill out. All right guys, so if you have an aftermarket intake, you're probably gonna have to remove it and put the OEM one on. We're not 100% sure yet, but we have to remove that intake um, inlet and Joel dropped his second tool in my engine <laughs> base and now I now have two new tools. <laughs> well, all right, you got that one fair and square. That one's mine though. <laughs> so what Joel's gonna do is remove the intake. Um, I have an OEM one in the truck right now that we're gonna throw on if we need to, but I think we're gonna need to with the supercharger. All right, so we're going to remove these bolts here. Most of them are 12 millimeter, just for the support brackets on the side of the manifold and on the front. And then I think we're gonna start disconnecting some of this stuff and taking these hoses off of these clamps to start pulling this guy out. So now that everything's free, unplugged, pulled off all the lines, we're just walking around making sure there's nothing still attached to the manifold and unplugging up front here. Now we'll be able to actually start removing the manifold from the engine. Looks like what Joel did is he pinched these two lines. So when he removes them, there's not a bunch of coolant and fluid going everywhere. There still might be. Such a smart guy. I don't know about that. <laughs> so you've got some 12 mil bolts and nuts. Uh, Joel's just going to remove those to get this factory manifold off. Yeah. And there's one on the very back. So one, two, three, four, five bolts, two nuts. Cool. <laughs> now we should be ready to pull this guy out. So we're removing these studs, which are an external Torx, so E8. So, but if you don't have an external Torx uh, E8, you can use like vice grips or double nut it and uh, work it off that way, but they're not in there that tight. All right, I think we're gonna start cutting her down. Hey-o. Got her. Yeah. That guy. So yeah, it was just very heavily taped. And this is on the back side of the engine. Just kind of went ahead and just kind of cut the tape with a razor blade on the back side. To gotcha. It's a fight, but yeah. Right now, I'm just cleaning the surface of the, of um, where the supercharger's gonna sit, because we're getting ready to install that now. Season some brake clean, kind of getting the big, big dirty chunks off. 
So the way Higher Up ships uh, their superchargers, they, they ship them bolted together. And the way mounting is through the supercharger. So we'll separate it from the base and I'll show you what that looks like. And there's your, your heat exchanger. And here's your base. Yep, yep. Make sure these O-rings look good. Which they do. Oh yeah. But this is front as well where the sensor is. So now that Joel has everything wiped down, cleaned off, we're gonna put the lower supercharger manifold like this. Um, you're gonna have, what is it, six? Uh, eight bolts. Eight bolts. Yep. You're gonna have six shorter ones that are gonna go on the inside here, and then eight that are gonna go, the longer ones on the back side, back there. Mm -hmm. And then again, like Joel said earlier, make sure that this plug for the sensor is on the front facing forward. And then for these bolts, they're gonna torque down to 15 foot pounds, and then Joel is just using a little dab of blue Loctite on there to make sure they're snug and they stay there, but they're not permanent. So we'll get all these started, blue Loctite, Loctite all of them. Once everything is secure, we're gonna make sure we do it as uniform as possible, but torque everything down to 15 foot pounds. All right guys, so Joel is starting with the middle two bolts here. Um, the torque spec is 15, 15 foot pounds. He's just gonna hit everything to 10 to make sure everything sits flush. You're not torquing one side, front side or back side down to lift the opposite end. Um, we want this to be as flush and level as possible. So all bolts are gonna be hit at 10 foot pounds. And then what he'll do is he'll do the same thing, work his way from the middle, out front and back to hit everything at 15. And again, we use blue Loctite. So it's not permanent permanent, but it's, it's in there good. So now we're separating the blower from the heat exchanger part. Um, looks like they want us to torque this, which actually works in our favor because the blower will be in the way to torque these back bolts that are kind of hidden. So yeah, let's go ahead and separate that. We got the upper part of the the supercharger, uh, the heat exchanger part, and from here we're just gonna start uh, finger tightening all our bolts. Um, they go all around the supercharger, and we're just gonna put a drop of Loctite on uh, on each bolt as well. All right, so now we got all our bolts threaded in and the Loctite. Um, we're gonna do now. We're gonna go around and torque all of these 10 millimeter bolts to five foot pounds, but we're gonna start at three. If you got a digital torque wrench, it's kind of best to watch the numbers and kind of start creeping up on there. So we'll start doing uniform uh, torquing and we'll do it in two passes. So now we gotta torque all of these uh, 10 millimeter head bolts um, around the supercharger and I went ahead already and kind of did so evenly. Um, and we're gonna torque those to five foot pounds. I'm hungry. It's getting about that time. All right, so Joel has all of these M6 bolts all torqued down to about five foot pounds. It's five and a quarter, so five foot pounds with blue Loctite. Now we're gonna start getting into the pulley system. So mounting all of the pulleys down there, um, and then we'll just keep on moving, but it looks so good. Something in my engine bay is finally clean. Adam's polish has some, some work ahead of him, I think. So, uh, so now we're removing uh, two of the timing cover bolts. Uh, that's where our pulley is gonna sit. So there's one 12 hidden under here and one 14 deep in here. All right, so now we removed our two top timing cover bolts. Uh, now we gotta remove one more bolt and that's our alternator bolt. It's down at the bottom. And that is a 14. 
So the next step was to rotate the radiator hose so it's out of the way of the pulleys. And then I think what Joel's gonna do is take this little bracket off to move all this stuff out of the way. All right, so silver long bolt with the hex head is gonna go on the middle left side. Small Allen head bolt is on the right side middle. And then the black long bolt is on the bottom left corner. Two black washers, so one up top here and then one down here and then this will just slide in. And then your small little silver bolt is right up top in the corner. So now we'll be applying Loctite to two of the bolts on this pulley system. That would be this, uh, this Allen. Allen bolt. Hey, oops, not too much. And our long bolt. This guy right there. Run most of it in by hand. Make sure you don't squish any wires on the back side. Make sure they're free. So now we will torque um, these bolts on the idler brackets or the pulley brackets to 25 foot pounds. And now we'll be torquing our Allen to 18 foot pounds. Now it's working our top left bolt to 18 foot pounds as well. So now I've got all these bolts torqued down to spec. Uh, I think what Joel is gonna do is lift the truck off the ground so he can try and see if he can get that crank pulley bolt way down in there. If he can get a better angle it from underneath. So yeah, so now we gotta get to our crank pulley bolt, but there's no way to get to it or put a tool on there to break this bolt free. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our fan clutch, which is these four 12s, and that'll allow us to take the fan shroud off and, um, and get a better access to this crank bolt. Now we got our fan shroud out of the way. Now we can go ahead and remove our crank pulley bolt, and I have enough room to fit my impact in there. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out of there. Way easier. Way easier. Cool. We got our, our crank pulley on there. We verified that the dowel is lined up with the factory crank uh, dowel itself. Now we go ahead and put our factory bolt in there and we're gonna torque it to 200 foot pounds. Uh, I did put a little dab of blue Loctite, so nothing should move. So now we're installing the rest of the pulleys, which is a tensioner and we're gonna sneak our belt while we're installing it in the tensioner and then route our belt that way. Cool, cool. So I actually see that guy. Cool. So we're gonna start installing our belt. Um, so we're gonna start at the supercharger itself, and it goes down the long ways in one shot, and then to the crank, and then it goes through the tensioner and kind of zigzags back up to the to our uh, tensioner, just like that. Yeah, for this part, I would just look at the pictures of the uh, install instructions because it's gonna be really, really hard to show you exactly how this is routed. So now we're gonna work in on getting the the front mount. Uh, heat exchanger. So we first step, we gotta remove the hood latch. So we'll start by taking off this little black cap. Whoa, three tens. Set that to the side. Okay. 
Give ourselves a little bit more room and just remove it completely for now. All right, so now we're gonna now we got our hood latch out of the way. We're gonna remove this center support bracket. There's gonna be a few tens, two nuts down here. Uh, it looks like our trans cooler is attached to it, so we're gonna loosen that for the time being. And then remove these two, one more ten, so and another one. And also disconnect some bracket, some plugs that are right here. So now we're removing the horns, freeing up some space on the front of this grill, um, just so we can mount this on this heat exchanger. And remove or remove any aftermarket accessories as well. Working this kit out right now. Um, it looks like uh, we're gonna have to find, or just move some brackets around to make our trans cooler work with our uh, with our coolant pump for the heat exchanger. But this is the mounting point for that. It shares the same hole as the bottom uh, part of this trans cooler. So what we may end up doing is eliminating this mount here, and just have it mounted to this mounting point and to the center brace as well. So since we are working with Harp on this new kit here. The kit, the trucks that they've been product testing and fitting didn't have the trans cooler up top. So we're making a little bracket. So we've got this mounted here and then we've got this bracket taken off and then we're making a little extension right here to basically cover this bridge or bridge this gap here. And we think that should do it. And then we'll be able to start running the lines for all these. We think we have a solution for this. We're gonna start running hoses to see where we have to relocate the winch controller to because it was right here and right here. So we might be able to space it out, move it to the right a little bit, but we're gonna run hoses and see where we where we sit. And then I gotta get a plug for this guy. Other than that, it's all really coming together now. So we went ahead and threw on the throttle body and now we're gonna start figuring out just exactly where we have to run all of the hoses for this guy. So we've got the pump ran to the intercooler here. We gotta figure out where we're gonna route this top one to go over there and so on and so forth. Since this kit is so new and we're very limited on instructions here, um, cause they're still pretty much in development. They're pretty much finalized, but we have to remove, so the studs from the old uh, top over to the driver's side front two spots here so that we can put this reservoir up front over here. So we're just gonna flip the studs from there to there put these bolts on the other side. So the U-shaped hose that's provided is gonna have the long end go into the reservoir up top, and then that shorter end is gonna go down into the bottom passenger, or driver side, driver side of the supercharger. So here is the hose routing. You've got this small U that goes from the top of the reservoir to the driver side of the supercharger, and then the bottom of the reservoir is gonna run through you can either run it on top of the radiator like we did. We put some sheathing on it to protect it um, from rubbing, or you can go through this little gap here. When we ran it through the little gap here, it didn't like the bend that it had to go to. It had to go to like a sharp 90, um, which we didn't like. This just looks a lot more uniform and isn't gonna restrict flow. Other hose will run from the pump to the bottom of the radiator. And then you've got another tube or hose that's gonna run from passenger side of the supercharger to the top of the new coolant radiator. And then we just gotta figure out this one and then we're gonna take the purge valve, I believe it's called, from the OEM manifold. We're gonna remove that because that is gonna be what runs from the top of the supercharger here and we're gonna try and mount it down here. 
Fun stuff trying to get one of these first kits figured out. You guys should have gotten a silver spacer like this. Uh, you will have gotten an M6 bolt. We got an M5, so we found this bolt laying around. We're gonna try and see if it works. It should be an M6 by, I think, 40 millimeters long. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna mount that, the OEM purge valve here, with that M6 bolt and the OEM bracket and everything with that spacer. All right, so there is that purge valve mounted M6 bolt, about 40 millimeters long with that silver spacer. That is nice and secure, plugged in, and now we're gonna route this to the bottom of the side of the supercharger here. Alrighty, we're moving along here. So we got the OEM coolant hose. We had to route it kind of in between, you guys can see it right here, in between these two hoses, and then up through behind, and then to the bottom of that throttle body, and then push that clamp all the way up there. It's a little bit of a stretch, but it all, it's all connected. What's next, Dad? Take time. All right, guys, so this EVAP line is pretty long. It's the OEM one, and we need to get it on the back of this nipple here. So we're gonna take about seven inches off from this bend here in, and that should give us enough play and enough room to have it basically come straight up bend just a little bit and then go straight onto that nipple there. All right, let's see. Transfer this clamp over to... Yeah, that's a much better angle. Yeah, so... That'll be good. Cuckoo. So yeah, we took seven inches off, and you guys can still kind of see that it's it's still got a little bit of a bend here, but it's got not nearly as bad of a bend. So if we wouldn't have cut it, it would have been like all the way back here and bent kind of funny, so let's cut it. So we're at the point now, everything is plumbed, and we're putting the OEM intake back on because the in-gen cold air intake hose that comes off the throttle body was too long. So the kit was designed for an OEM intake, so we're gonna put an OEM intake back on. Using the OEM intake, you guys are gonna be taking this whole piece off of it because it's gonna be plumbed straight from the throttle body to the box. So just take off the hose clamps off of here to reuse on this side and this side. So once you guys have your intake put on, what you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the plug for the mass airflow sensor right there because you're going to have this splitter that's going to plug one side into the computer of the mass, o, mass flow and then right into the sensor and then from there it's going to plug into the bottom of the supercharger down there so it'll look kind of like this we're going to clean it up zip tie everything route it and then i think we're going to have to cut some tape down here to get the throttle body sensor plugged in here and then just plug her in. Just like that. So yeah, cut that tape that has this hold in and down there so you can reach the, the sensor for the throttle body there. I'll give you up. Now we're gonna plug in our supercharger plug. So Hira gives you a wiring harness for your uh, coolant pump for the supercharger. So they give you a relay and uh, Plug that into your wiring harness. It's also fused, so be sure to take your fuse out before you start wiring because you can pop that fuse, so don't want any accidents. Um, ground uh, on the battery, positive on the battery. A tap a fuse that will be going to uh, EFI number three in the fuse block under the hood. And last is our pigtail for our coolant pump. So we get those running. Hey guys, we're at the point of tapping in. So basically you're going to use their fuse tap that they send you and you're going to go to EFI 3, which is if you're looking at the front of the box from the front of the truck, you're going to see this 120 amp fuse right here. And then you're going to go one over, pull that 10 out that's sticking out a little bit higher than the other one and use this tap to basically go from here. And that's going to tell the 
fuel pump? Uh, coolant pump. The coolant pump that it needs to turn on. When the key is on. Yeah. When the key's on. Fuse tap is all in. So now we are doing aftermarket things with aftermarket things. So we had to space out the winch controller to keep it off of this line down here from the pump. So we're just gonna get this spaced out and a bolt and a nut through there. And then I think we're good to start doing some fluids and fire it up. So we got the winch controller all spaced out. It's not going anywhere. You gotta say that so it doesn't go anywhere. Now we're gonna do our plug. Again, you guys will have a plug that comes with your kit. Um, we had to go get one. So we're gonna Teflon that, plug this up, put our horns back on, and then I think we're good to uh, start cycling fluids and fire it up. All right, so now we got the new radiator um, all plugged up there with the Teflon and that NPT eighth inch bolt with plug. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the horns back on, plug everything in, and then grill on. Start running fluids and fire it up. When you guys are ready to start filling up the coolant reservoir for the new radiator and the supercharger, make sure to get this stuff right here. So uh, AC Delco Dex Cool, it's a 50-50 blend. It'll help prevent the cooler on the supercharger to uh, have buildup and it actually avoid the warranty on the supercharger if you don't use this. After filling everything up, topping off radiator coolant there and then the coolant for the pump, make sure that you put the fuse in for this pump so you don't seize it. Um, yeah, we're gonna give it a quick bump, try to get fluid to go down and then see where it sits. So now we just have to get the grill bolted back in, bumper back up, snug down, and then we should be ready for startup. All right, there you guys have, that is the install process of the new Harrop Supercharger for the 3.5 liter Toyota Tacoma. Shout out to True Automotive, especially to Joel for knocking this install out of the park. Um, it's a brand new product, so instructions for install were fairly limited, but we put our heads together, figured it out. Um, now we just have to wait on a tune. So, because the, the product is so new, there's no tune for 529 gears, 35 inch tires, anything like that. So D3 Performance in Texas is actually going to send out a, uh, a bass tune so that I can actually drive the truck to Jake and Lucy Raps, get it wrapped. Next week, drive the Chapman's Auto to get it tuned there for a week by the guys at D3. So now we just wait for a tune, but hope you guys liked the video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for final numbers. That'll be a separate video, but I already did the baseline at the dyno at Chapman's, so we have our baseline numbers, and now we just need to tune it and get our new numbers. So, see you guys in the next one.